Hi everyone, how's it going? I am very excited because today I have a really special video for you. Today we're going to talk about daily routines. Now, if we're talking about daily routines, what verb tense would we be using? Hmm. Of course, it's the present simple, right? And we've practiced the present simple a lot. So we're going to continue to practice, but we're going to look at natural spoken English. So of course, this is the English that you hear outside of the classroom, on TV, in movies, and everywhere else. This is the English that you need to know if you truly want to become fluent and you truly want to understand native English speakers. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very popular YouTuber, Stefan James, who runs the very successful YouTube channel, Project Life Mastery. And Stefan has kindly offered his video that he made looking at the daily routines of the world's most successful people. So we're going to look at clips of this video and then I'm going to stop and explain the language that Stefan is using. So we're gonna analyze his speech, look at his pronunciation and look at his expressions because they're very different than the expressions and the pronunciation that you're used to hearing in the classroom. So before we start, I wanna say a huge thank you to Stefan and in this video, we're only going to look at a small portion of Stefan's video. So in the comments, you can watch the full video that he posted and you can continue to learn about these daily routines of the world's most successful people. So without further ado, let's jump right in and get started. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys. What do you notice his first word is? So, it's that word filler we've already talked about. So, in this video, I'm, I'm gonna. What do we have here? I'm. Of course, it's a contraction of I am. Good. Repeat, I'm. I'm gonna. And what's this? A reduction of going to. Very good. I'm gonna. I'm gonna share with you guys. And here, of course, we have guys, which I taught you last video, that it's gender neutral. So here, obviously, he's talking to an audience of both men and women, but he's still using guys to mean both. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys some of the morning rituals of the most successful, the most famous people in the world today and throughout history. Some of the morning rituals of the most successful, the most famous people in the world today and throughout history. Now, let's just look at this. Now, in the video, he says this very quickly, and it's because we're reducing the words. So, of commonly between two words, of is reduced to a. Uh. Sama, a. Uh. But here, I'm making this sound very quick as well. I'm saying some, some. And I'm connecting it with a. Uh. So this sounds like together, summa, summa. Repeat, summa. And then I also say the as one. Some of the, some of the. Okay, repeat, some of the. Very good. Some of the some of the some of the morning rituals of the most successful, the most famous people in the world today and throughout history. Here's the first person he talks about, and this is Tony Robbins. Now remember that we use the present simple to describe facts about individuals, their personal information. So here, his job is a life coach. So how would you put this in a sentence in the present simple? You could say, Tony Robbins is, the verb to be in the present simple, is a life coach because we need that article before our professions. So repeat, Tony Robbins is a life coach. Very good. Okay, how could you put this information in a sentence? 
Again, you could say Tony Robbins is from California as a complete sentence. Repeat, Tony Robbins is from California. Very good. And his age. Now put this in a complete sentence. Very good. Again, Tony Robbins is 57. Now notice, of course, we're using is because I'm referring to Tony Robbins in the third person singular, which is he. So I need he is for all of these sentences. Okay, now let's find out about his daily routine. And he starts off every single morning doing some form of a morning ritual. He starts off every single morning doing. Now here, where is the verb in the present simple? Very good, starts. And of course we have this S because it's he, he starts. Now what does this mean? Starts off, notice we have off. This is a phrasal verb, to start off. So we need the verb and the preposition in order for it to make sense. So he starts off, starts soft. Okay, repeat, start soft. Very good. And this just means begin. So I could say he begins, add that S. He begins, this is in the infinitive. He begins every single morning or he starts off every single morning. And what do you notice with this verb? It's in an ing, a continuous form. This is because of the sentence structure. He starts off every single morning doing. Okay, so here we have the expression to start off in the infinitive with to. Something, so here the something is every single morning. That's the something. By, and then your verb in ing. Now here we have doing. Now notice, Notice that in this sentence, there's no by. By should be right here. Now, why is this? Is he being grammatically incorrect? Well, to be honest, yes, he is. But because by is such a small word, a preposition, English speakers often leave them out because we don't need them to understand the meaning. However, grammatically, we need to include this by. So I'll give you some examples. I always start off my meetings by introducing everyone. Okay, so what's the verb in the present simple? Start off. And of course, I don't have that S because the subject is I. Okay, what's an adverb in this sentence? Always is the adverb, very good. I always start off something. The something is my meetings. That's the something. So here I have my by, and then I have my verb in ing. By introducing, so verb here by introducing everyone. Another example, I never start off my day by drinking coffee. Okay, so again, the verb in the present simple, start off. What's the adverb here? Exactly, never. I never start off. And what's the something in this sentence? Very good, my day is the something. I never, never start off my day by, and then my verb in ing, by drinking coffee. Okay, very good. And he starts off every single morning doing some form of a morning ritual. And he starts off every single morning doing some form of a morning ritual. Hey, of course you know who this is, President Barack Obama. Now, let's find out some information about him. Job, of course, politician. Now, put this in a complete sentence for me using the verb to be. Barack Obama is, and then what do I need? Is a politician. Very good. And Barack Obama is from Hawaii. Excellent. And this one? Good. Barack Obama is 56. 
Very good. And he starts off working out 45 minutes first thing in the morning. He starts off working out 45 minutes first thing in the morning. Okay, now, again, he used the same expression. Starts off, but what are we missing here? Very good, I need by. He starts off by working out. So notice he did it twice in a row. He's leaving it out. Okay, and then I have another phrasal verb, to work out, which I taught you means to exercise exercising but of course we need that verb in the ing form because that's how this expression goes to start off by verb in ing by working out 45 minutes first thing in the morning so here we have a time expression first thing and this just means early in my day so first thing in the morning so let's say I woke up at 6 o'clock a.m. Well, maybe something I do first thing in the morning could be at 6.30, for example, or maybe even 7 o'clock. So it's just early in my day. It doesn't have to be literally the first thing I do. Okay. And we can say first thing in the afternoon or in the evening. It doesn't always have to be in the morning. So for example, I always take my dog for a walk first thing in the evening. So the evening, let's say the evening starts around five o'clock. Well, maybe I take my dog for a walk at six o'clock. So again, it doesn't have to be right at 5.01. It just means early in the evening. So in this expression here, where is the verb in the present simple? Good, take my dog. Okay, and is there an adverb in this sentence? Yeah, always, I always take my dog. And he starts off working out 45 minutes first thing in the morning. And he starts off working out 45 minutes first thing in the morning. Um, he also avoids coffee instead of, uh, and instead drinks water, orange juice, or green tea. Um, he also avoids coffee and instead drinks water, orange juice, or green tea. So notice how he begins his sentence with um, which is just a word filler. And this is a word filler we want to avoid as much as possible. Um, he also avoids. So what's the verb in the present simple? Very good, avoids. So this is a negative expression to mean to not want to do something. He also avoids coffee. Okay, but notice here that there's no verb. This is just a noun. He doesn't add a verb, which is fine, but if we wanted to add a verb, we need to use a verb in ing form. So for example, he always avoids drinking coffee. Now, sometimes in English, we have one verb and then the next verb is followed by ing. And really, it just depends on the verb that comes before. So avoid is one of those verbs that afterwards we need an ing. But notice avoid is still in the present simple, so I need this s, he avoids. And what's the adverb? Always. Very good. He always avoids drinking coffee. But we don't need it. We can do this structure here. He also avoids coffee. And if I wanted, I could repeat a subject and say, and he instead, but I don't need to, like in this sentence, he instead. So instead is a word that we use to decide between options. So I have one option is coffee, and the other option is water. Well, there's also orange juice or green tea. So I can give a sentence and say, I drink tea instead of coffee. So notice here we have instead of, but your sentence is in the present simple because this is talking about our daily routine. I drink tea instead of coffee. Okay, or I could say, I'll have coffee instead. 
So we can use this as a standalone word at the end of a sentence. If someone offers you two choices, you can say, someone might ask, would you like tea? And you can say, no, I'll have coffee instead. Okay, very good. Um, he also avoids coffee instead of, uh, and instead drinks water, orange juice, or green tea. Um, he also avoids coffee instead of, uh, and instead drinks water, orange juice, or green tea. Do you know who this is? This is Mark Zuckerberg. Now, he is the founder of Facebook. So give this to me in a complete sentence. Good. Mark Zuckerberg is the founder of Facebook. Is, I need to say, the founder of Facebook. Very good. Can you give me a complete sentence here? Good. Mark Zuckerberg is 30. Very good. And remember that we also use the present simple for our likes and dislikes because these are considered information about us. So I would put this in the present simple as well. So can you give me a complete sentence? Mark Zuckerberg likes, with an S, because it's he, he likes computers. So this right here is a complete sentence. He likes computers. Mark Zuckerberg likes computers. Very good. He always wears the same thing every morning, the same shirt. He always wears the same thing every morning, the same shirt. Okay, let's start at the beginning here. He always. Notice that there's a slight Y. We use this Y sound to connect two vowels. So I have a vowel here and a vowel here. So to make this a smooth sound, I can say he always, he always, he always. But it's so quick and so subtle that you don't notice it very much. But you can use this to connect vowels. He always, repeat, he always, he always. And what is the verb in the present simple? Excellent, wears, good. He always wears the same thing every morning, the same shirt, okay. Now notice here we're using always, which means, of course, every day. But do you think Mark Zuckerberg wears the exact same shirt every single day? Probably not. However, English speakers often use always even if it's not seven days a week. So I can say, I always wear sweaters in the winter, but really it's more of a usually or often, because always technically is seven days a week. Now, I don't wear sweaters every single day, but I'll commonly just say always, if I mean usually or often. He always wears the same thing every morning, the same shirt. He always wears the same thing every morning, the same shirt. Because... Do you know who this is? His name is Howard Schultz. Okay, let's find out his job. Okay, can you put this in a complete sentence? Okay, good. So we need, of course, the verb to be. Howard Schultz is... Now I need an article. We say the CEO of. So remember with Mark Zuckerberg, it was the founder of Facebook. Here it's the CEO of Starbucks. Do you know what a CEO is? It's a chief executive officer. It's the highest position within a company. Okay, good. And can you put this in a complete sentence? You can say, he is from New York City. And as a contraction, remember, I'm going to say he's. He's from New York City. Good. And of course, what does he like? Give this to me in a complete sentence. Very good. He likes coffee and probably he likes Starbucks coffee. <laughs> 
Okay, let's find out his daily routine. Uh, it says, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. I get up at 4.30 in the morning. Okay, so what do you notice here, first of all? Get up, this is, of course, a phrasal verb with a verb and a preposition. Okay, and notice the sound. Get up, I get up, get up. Now, why is this happening? Because in American English, when we have a T between two vowels, we turn it into a D. I get up, I get up. Repeat, I get up. Very good. I get up, and now we have an at with a specific time, at 4.30 in the morning. There are many different ways to express time in English because we use a 12 hour clock. We have a.m. and p.m. 4.30 in the morning, which is also 4.30 a.m. Or we can just say 4.30. And same if it was p.m., we could say 7 o'clock p.m., 7 in the evening, seven at night, or just seven. So many different ways to express time. Uh, it says, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, it says, I get up at 4.30 in the morning, 4.30, and I walk my three dogs and I work out. I walk my three dogs and I work out. Okay, so where's the first verb here? I walk, walk my three dogs. Now we can also say, take my three dogs for a walk. These are two different sentence structures, but they mean exactly the same thing. So one we're saying I walk, the other is I take. Okay, I walk my three dogs and I work out. But here he's not saying and, he's saying and. I walk my three dogs and I work out, and I work out. This is a way to reduce this in natural spoken English. And I work out. Good. And notice here, work out. But because of linking, I'm going to transfer this K sound onto this vowel. And it's going to sound like I work out. Cout. I work out. Repeat. I work out. Very good. And I walk my three dogs and I work out. And I walk my three dogs and I work out. So he